Hello, I'm Matthew Perry and welcome to the program. On today's program we're going to be discussing the legalization of marijuana in the United States, its pros and cons, and its history. Now we go to Chase Niles with an interview of a pro-marijuana user and somebody who supports the legalization of marijuana in the United States. Hello, sir. Um, so we're here today to talk to you about the legalization of marijuana. So what is your stance on the legalization of marijuana? I personally stand that, you know, we should legalize it to a certain degree. And, uh, yeah, I think it's something that is definitely a better alternative, like, instead of what people would smoke, like, cigarettes and all that stuff, like, definitely better and, like, way better than uh, cigarettes and all that. Um, so has it helped you medically in any way? Uh, actually it has because, uh, I actually have, like, I'm not exactly quite sure if it's, you know, insomnia, but I just have problems sleeping a lot. So it is something that actually will help me sleep and like I wake up in time and, you know, I feel uh, refreshed and, you know, instead of uh, without it, then usually it's pretty, uh, it's just a tough night. So what do you think about um, the people that say, um, oh, we should not legalize marijuana, marijuana is a bad drug, marijuana kills, what do you, what, what does that make you think when, when you hear those kinds of words being used about the drug that you say is, is your medication? Uh, well, I mean, I understand people, you know, teach his own, so I understand, you know, they have their thoughts or something, and I have mine, of course, but, uh, I think also that people who haven't really experienced it or seen it as a medical way, they just see all the negative sides of something, then, you know, they assume, basically. So, do you use it more to get high, or do you use it more as a medication, or, or do you use the medication as a way to have a high that you enjoy having? I understand. Uh, to be honest, it started off more as a medication kind of thing, but lately uh, I've been using it mainly just as you know, a, a getaway per se. But uh, no, it, it definitely has helped me a lot in uh, different medical reasons, not just the uh, sleeping and all that. So, do you think sometimes it could be more uh, more mental health than physical health? Uh, it depends. I mean, lots of people like myself actually. Another reason I I continue with it is because I have uh, severe back problems. So, you know, a lot of people actually have it because of, like, joint problems or, you know, just, like, aches, but basically in the body. And, uh, it definitely helps with that. It helps with that pain necessarily kind of, uh, soothes, and soothes it. But, uh, I mean, it depends. It, it could be used as both, I think, physical and mental. So, how often do you use, uh, medical marijuana? Uh, personally, I use it probably about, at least, like, one time a day or one time every other day. And has this progressed? Like, was, was there one point where you were using it once a week or once a month and it gradually got more? Yes, it's definitely, I'm not going to lie, it's definitely uh, increased in my kind of uh, daily life. Thank you, Chase. Now here's some pros to marijuana usage and legalization in the United States. One, it's known to help medicinally, and two, it would end the drug war. Some cons are is that it's known as a gateway drug and another con would be an increase in crime and other issues in the United States. Now we go to Michael Crump with an interview with someone who's neutral on the situation. Thanks Matt. We're here with Samantha Alvarez. So what is your opinion on the legalization of marijuana? I have a neutral opinion because I could care less but I don't really care for it. What do you think about the people that use marijuana? for either recreation or for medicinal purposes? Those who use it for a purpose, um, it makes sense for them to use it, but those who just do it for fun, I think it, that's their own choice. It's like alcohol. You have an option to, but you just take care of your own responsibilities during it. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Have you specifically ever partook in the use of marijuana in any way, shape, or form? I have never done any form of marijuana. Oh. Well, thank you. Thank you, Michael. Now for some history of marijuana use in the United States and in the world. For over 4,000 years, marijuana has been used in utilitarian items ranging from ropes to bags. Within the past 100 years, marijuana has seen a surge in recreational use as a drug. Now we go to Chase Niles, who's interviewing someone who does not support the use of recreational marijuana in any way, shape, or form. Hello, Ms. Copeland. Thank you for coming in for this interview. Um, so what do you think about the legalization of marijuana? 
Well, if you ask me, I think that the legalization of marijuana would be a very stupid move uh, for our state. Do you think that the issue um, could be solved by reducing how easily um, it is to get uh, a marijuana um, recommendation? Uh, well, I think we need to tighten the regulations on medical marijuana. Uh, definitely we need to do that um, and make it, you know, it's kind of, there are narcotics that are, um, you know, basically very, are very regulated by the DEA. And I think we need to start, if we're going to use marijuana as a medical um, device or, you know, as some sort of a medical solution, then there definitely needs to be a DEA involvement or somewhere along the line where it is regulated and not just walk in and say, oh, my eye hurts. Oh, here's some marijuana for you. And, and what do you think about um, drugs that also help people, um, by not just alcohol, like actual medical purposes, such as Xanax is one example mm -hmm. of a drug that helps a lot of people, yeah. but, um, but then it can be turned around and be abused. So do you think sure. um, we should have tighter, uh, possibly contracts for the people who actually need the medications to say, you know, um, that they're legally bound, that if any damage happens while other people take this drug, that they're responsible? I think, you know, say a parent who's on Xanax because they have crazy kids, um, that maybe that parent needs to be held responsible to not leave the Xanax out for their kids to consume or to sell uh, to their friends. Mm -hmm. So I think there's probably something in that area of, of, of uh, restrictions or regulations that we could probably tighten up a little bit. But uh, you look at something like Xanax, uh, you can't just walk into Walgreens and buy it. You have to have a prescription, you have to see a doctor. Um, it's highly regulated, so uh, it's a little more difficult to get a hold of. Uh, most abusers or people that are acting stupid um, usually steal it from their parents or from their grandparents. They don't, you know, they're not buying it off a dealer on the street. Because, um, as I'm pretty sure you know, you could just walk into a marijuana clinic and get a, a, a medical card or letter of recommendation mm -hmm. and mostly under a half an hour. Yeah. So. That's where I think Definitely. that we, if we're yeah. going to have medical marijuana, it needs to be more regulated. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you very much for doing this interview with us. All right. You're all very right. welcome. Have a nice year. Thank you. thank you, Chase. That's all for our program. Hopefully you tune in again. And remember to keep it good in the wood. Okay.